It's a February day. They have gathered for a high school basketball game, but there is so much more. In the entryway adjacent to the gymnasium, there are tables filled with items, filled with memories. This is a day dedicated to a coach who made an impact and one whose legacy lives on. Pat Sanju coached at Buffalo High School. He was a college athlete, carried an intensity, as did his teams. Well, when I got to Buffalo 17 years ago, I got I got to work with Pat for a little over two years, and um, when you were around him, he just made you feel like you were so important, and he was somebody that, when he entered a room, you could just feel his presence. He was himself a natural-looking athlete with, as they say, basketball skills. People knew of his power and presence in the lane. They called that Pat's Lane. And there's lots of stories. You can talk to a lot of guys about just owning that area, but one of the nicest, kindest men when you got on the basketball court, it was on. That's why it's so difficult to fathom that a teacher, a coach, and an athlete in his prime of life could be taken so quickly. The Saturday before he died, we played a pickup basketball game down in, out in South Dakota when we were on a, on a pheasant hunting trip. And, you know, you never would have guessed that anything would have happened. And um, you just really learn a lot about life and, and, and the perspective of life and, and how things can change so suddenly. Another tragic story today, former Concordia College basketball player Pat Sanju has died at the age of 32. 14 years ago, the man who inspired a team, a school, a community was gone with no warning. It was, a, it was a rare condition called pheochromocytoma, and it's basically a tumor on his adrenal gland that ruptured. That you don't know you have, right? Yeah, he, he didn't, he didn't know no he had, and, um, you know, and unfortunately, it just kind of got his heart going really, really fast and, and, and got going so fast that it stopped. They had lost a brother, a coach, a friend. As an adult at that time, uh, in my mid-20s, dealing with loss and is something I hadn't dealt with a lot prior to that um, so you, you got a number of different emotions running through your head and then you you're trying to you're trying to work through those things as an individual and then there was such a, a bigger picture going on as well um, you had a you had a high school um, that lost a brand or a young teacher that was very well liked his funeral was a tribute to who he was a town and school in shock, coming together to cope, to try to find answers to difficult questions. While they could not comprehend the death, they did understand his life. If I could have everybody just please give him a standing ovation. You know, he had a way, he had that way about him to be, it was all about relationships, you know, but he also knew you just, you didn't mess with certain things. Um, kids, happily, he was magnetic personality. Kids would go see him um, on the weekends, they'd stop by to say hi. They'd stop by his classroom all the time. Um, you know, during our passing time here, there'd be a line by his door for kids to come say hi to, to Coach Sanju. This day is about that man. They started to raise money and establish a scholarship in his name so that they can reconnect, so that they can share some memories. What does this mean to you to see a day like this? Yeah, how, how appreciative I am of the school yeah. and the community. They've done a lot, huh? Oh, the scholarship that they've been given in Pat's memory has just been unreal. The school has been tremendous administration, students, and faculty. This day has special meaning for different reasons. Cameron Sanju was just four years old when his father passed away. He's now a senior on a very good team, coached by his father's very good friend. Having this conversation with you right now is even more difficult for me because Cameron's here. And uh, I don't exactly know fully what world Cameron's living in right now, and we're going to sit down someday and visit about, about where he's at when he's ready to. And I've told him numerous times that when you're ready to talk about your dad, let me know, okay? And uh, I tell you what, Cameron, um, it's been, it's been my pleasure watching you grow up because you have become one heck of a young man and your dad's proud of you. Even though you were young when you lost your father, do you feel like you know him well because of all these people that have been around you? Oh yeah, I hear stories of everybody telling me like, oh, you look so much like your dad. When you grow your hair out, you have curls. It looks just like your dad. It's just kind of cool to have that. It's hard to imagine how he's been impacted and how he's impacted others. I am sitting here today um, because 
Cameron Sanju is still in the basketball program. Um, my, my path might have went a different way, but knowing that Cameron has been a part of this through all of it, um, it I, I feel like I need to stay connected to him. I don't know that I would have had the strength, personally. And, and that's, that's what we do here in sports and in athletics, guys, is you learn how to care, you learn how to be a family, and you learn how to get by. And I want you to think about those things. One, two, three, together! Go, Cam! Go, Cam! And on this day, they play a basketball game the way he would have relished it. So let's make sure we defend. You close out, high hands, chopping your feet. It means a lot to be able to go and play out there in front of people that I love and they kind of are all there just for me. You guys want to go 43? Let's keep them on a side, invite, invite, and keep giving back on the second level. With a coach who, 14 years later, knows he may never know how it all works, this thing we call life. I didn't have a clue what death and dying meant. I took it for granted every single day. And then when one of my best friends passed away, I didn't know how to handle it. I'm looking at Cameron as a little kid. I'm holding Avery. I'm seeing Kim struggle with it. I mean, it's an unbelievable thing to go through with people that you really care about. His widow is there front and center, a rock to the family through times that she cannot describe. And a son who the coach watches out for the way his father would appreciate. Nick's like an uncle to me and he's always been there. It's just kind of, it's different to see him in coaching mode, but. Protect, jump, Donnie, get to the ball, jump. I love it. Yeah, you guys just have that kind of relationship. Huh? Yeah, he can be hard on me in basketball and then right afterwards can just be like a family member. Because this one man made an impact in his time here that lives on in spirit. And this day embodies that spirit of competition and family and friends. I, you know, I think he would look, he's looking down and, and he's, uh, you know, he's smiling because, you know, we're, we're really doing a lot of good things and, and <clears throat> that's one of the things that he, that he always did very, very well is, is always, you know, was there for other people and, and was kind of like a hub to just so many friends and family. Another win for Buffalo on a day that reminds a community that life is significant and that the quality of years can trump the quantity and the people who really make a difference do just that beyond their time on earth. It kind of means a lot to know that my dad was loved and that they still will love him through me and kind of just keep on passing it down. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.